Martin, one check. Uh, these protesters uh, don't have an alternative solution and that they when you ask them they give you glassy ad responses I didn't say that what what do you how would you characterize what they're trying to say here what is their alternative solution if you understand it theirs these protesters. Uh, to, to leave collective bargaining alone I guess well would that be enough to fix the budget I think that uh, it's, it's an ancillary issue that has nothing to do with the budget well do you think that their solution of uh, maybe taxing rich people is a no consensus? Idea. Are you Stay asking them that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. demonstration in a bad disorderly fashion it gives the whole demonstration a bad look Okay, It'll give the in. asshole Rush Limbaugh something That's to talk right. about on Glenn the radio. Beck. Yeah. What do you think that they're, uh, they're feeding off of that? They feed off of that. Folks, we can win this. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Matt Smith. I'm from a couple different organizations, uh, the IWW and uh, Solidarity and Defense. Do you think that there's truth in the idea that, uh, I don't know, I mean, part of the reason we're in this mess is the lack of backbone and willingness to uh, not use all options on the table? Uh, I, I definitely believe that. I believe, uh, I believe that a lot of, thanks to bureaucratic unions like most of big labor, uh, there's a vested interest in the leadership of taking concessions and uh, not using all tools at your disposal. Uh, and it's also true that even those, the more business unions now, when, when they started, a lot of them started with more radical militant actions, oh, like the UAW. Uh, Walter Ruther is one of my heroes. Uh, not you, not uh, the Walter well, Ruther that there's a library named after, or the highway named after, the Walter Ruther that got beat up outside of Ford plants. Like, but actually voted against doing the sit-down strike in Flint. Yeah, I, these are people who 
these are organizations that 50, 60, 70 years ago were incredibly militant and they just didn't necessarily support the the Democratic they didn't support the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party had to support them. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, it's about time for Labor to split with the Democrats because Democrats have been really eager to show that they don't have labor's back. Right. And they don't, not even just big labor, they, like uh, voting, like the last few years, voting against uh, increases in minimum wage, uh, voting for a healthcare bill that in all reality punishes working people because if there's no public option, yep. which now there's no safeguard for prices, prices are gonna skyrocket. And then when some Republicans are against it, believe that those Republicans are out of line. I, I believe that they're in line, that they actually are looking out for people. I, I don't wanna be forced to buy right. healthcare that because it's going to be required. It's going to become more expensive. What type of other uh, direct action things that, and at what level could you foresee needing to have happen? Well, first of all, I, I don't think until uh, union bureaucracies are kicked out, I don't think we're going to really see... I want a general strike. I want there to be a general strike. The IWW is calling for a general strike. But do I ever think it's going to happen while there's mainstream labor unions? No, because these these bureaucrats, that, like although they're singing for Saudi, solidarity forever up there, they don't, they don't know the true meaning of that song. That song was. That song was an IWW song. That song was about people who are willing to, like the Haymarket Martyrs in Chicago, die for that eight hour day, for, to die for labor rights. To, these people, I think, I've never been middle class. I've always been working class. I don't, I don't, I don't have this uh, figment in my imagination that I'm, that I'm middle class. And I think that we've gotten weak, we've gotten, We've got soft, and we need to get hard again. There's been a class we're going for ages, and I think, uh, I think it's about time that the working class wakes up and answers the bell. Well, my name is Jaren Sage. I'm with a group called the Peace Mob. We come from Flint, Michigan. Uh, basically, we're into neighborhood revitalization, urban gardening, any kind of community activities. We throw a lot of events that are bringing the arts, the music, and the community together. We focus mostly on education. Um, we do a lot of alternative energy style things. We do a lot of water collections. Um, we travel around a whole lot. We drive a bus. We're here today in Lansing to feed all these people as much as possible. Free food and show our support for the people. Um, this is one of my buddies, Terry Kinsey. I don't know if you want to get some more people, but I'm out of stuff to say, I guess, right now. But Well, alright. The other thing I've been trying to ask everybody is, uh, what would you tell Rick Snyder if he uh, wanted a burger? Just step down. Just get out of the way. There's people that care. You know? And if you don't care, then I don't know why you would spend so much money and so much time going to school to get into a position like that. You know? Just to disable people. And you know, we're out here trying to do the same thing. Just live, have a good time, and people like you just ruining it. No pensions! that they can't bid fairly? I don't think so. I think they got the upper hand. We're paying the health care, the pensions, and putting our kids to school and college. That's all we ask is for our fair chance. Don't cut us up. Michigan, Michigan is the home of labor. It is the birthplace of labor. Now it is time for labor to take back its creed and to lead the way. Michigan and labor should lead the way. As you think about your own situation, look at all of these signs that are here. Look at the rainbow of colors and people that are here. Folk from every level of the community. This is a national strategy that's being employed upon working people and folk that
that believe in freedom and justice to turn back the hands of time on our progress. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations in 1948 guarantees collective bargaining, guarantees dignity and respect for workers. John F. Kennedy signed an executive order in 1962 guaranteeing collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is not just about you take this and I take that. It's about dignity. It's about respect. It's about justice. It's about doing the right thing. But even but even more important than what Kennedy said, even more important than what the United Nations said, even more important than what the National Labor Relations Boards have said since the 30s, is what our God has said. Our God has said that the laborer is worthy of his hire. We as workers, as people, who are minds have stayed on freedom and justice and equity, must speak up, must stand up, and must get up. Because you came, listen, because you came to Lansing today, it don't mean a darn thing if you don't go back to your local communities and begin to organize and organize and organize.